It is safe to say that the ongoing pandemic is driving a lot of people crazy. We're feeling cooped up, we're anxious. It's been months since we finally admitted that we don't like baking bread. But some people in Michigan have taken their frustrations a little too far. There is a new focus on the threat of radical militia groups in this country after the arrests of extremists accused of plotting to kidnap the governor of Michigan. According to investigators, the so-called Wolverine Watchmen first plotted to storm the Michigan Capitol, then settled on kidnapping Governor Whitmer at her lakeside vacation home. One of those charged in the kidnapping plot rebelled against the pandemic rules on social media. Every single person that works for government is your enemy. Their main complaint seems to have been state restrictions imposed during the pandemic, especially the closing of gyms. God damn! These guys were apparently so mad about gyms being closed that they try to kidnap the governor? I mean, I get that it's frustrating to not be able to go to your gym, but I feel like on the list of solutions, kidnapping the governor should be below doing some push-ups. I mean, if you're upset about the gyms being closed, don't kidnap the governor. Kidnap a personal trainer. In fact, kidnap my personal trainer. He said tomorrow we're doing burpees, and I don't know what that means, but I'm scared. And can I just say, angry white dudes are truly on some other level. I mean, think about it. Flint, Michigan had dirty water that poisoned its own citizens for years, and those people stayed peaceful. But these guys formed pale ISIS because they couldn't go to Planet Fitness? Now, unfortunately, this is hardly the first time we've heard about militias recently. They've been looming over protests and storming state houses since the early days of the pandemic. And I'm not gonna lie, this whole militia thing in America still blows my mind. I mean, when I first heard there was a group of young men who carry guns around and all dress alike, I thought, I mean, you can't fool me, That's, that's a gang. Right, it's a super white gang, but that's a gang. But my second thought was, usually you only hear about armed militias in countries like Afghanistan or Sudan, you know? So why is this something that is also going on in America? Well, let's find out why in another installment of If You Don't Know, Now You Know. When you talk about militias in America, you have to start hundreds of years ago. Although back then, militias were a lot different than the ones we're seeing today. Well-regulated militias were actually quite important to the founders. They believed they were a bulwark against tyranny, and they were worried that the big, strong, new central government might crush these state military forces. So what they did is they said, we will have a militia. All able-bodied residents between certain ages are available to be called forth by the government in defense of the state. And once called forth, they answer to the government, they're trained by the government, they're directed and regulated by the government. The federal government was requiring everyone to be in the militia, but the state started to try to get around it in the early 19th century because it was so unpopular. So they created laws that said there is an organized militia and an unorganized militia. And anybody who wants to participate in the militia actively will be part of the organized militia. That later became the National Guard. This new arrangement, titled the Militia Act, will also be referred to as the Dick Law after its sponsor, U.S. Senator Charles Dick of Ohio. Yes, the Dick Law made a clear separation between organized and unorganized militias. And furthermore, None of you are even paying attention right now, are you? You're just thinking about dick law. You're sitting there giggling, thinking about dick law, huh? You're so immature. I'm trying to give you information, and now you're probably imagining it as a new law and order spinoff. Go ahead then, take your time. Ha ha, dick law. In fact, I'll show you a logo for the show, if this will move things along, okay? You happy now? Den den. The point I was trying to make is, like freedom of speech and trash ass weaves, militias go back to the very beginning of America. Early America needed everyone to be ready to defend it at a moment's notice. You know, it was a different world with different needs. I mean, hell, Canada was a threat to America back then, which is wild. It's like finding out Mr. Rogers used to be a cage fighter. Whew, things have changed. But in today's age, militias are a lot like wiping your ass with leaves. They used to be all we had, but with all the progress society has made, if you're still doing that shit, you're probably a little crazy. And in fact, once militias were folded into the National Guard, unofficial militias sort of disappeared from America. Well, at least for a while. But in recent years, 
they started to re-emerge in a much different and disturbing form. Armed paramilitary groups first got traction in the early 90s with high-profile clashes in Ruby Ridge, Idaho and Waco, Texas. Their numbers dropped after the Oklahoma City bombing, but they've been on the rise since President Obama took office. It is in part a reaction to the election of America's first black president. These groups start to expand very rapidly, I think largely in response to the idea that the United States is becoming less white. Well. You don't like blacks. You're racist and everything like that because he's a black president. No, I don't care what color he is. There's something not right about him. Militias grew nearly 800% during Obama's presidency as conspiracy theories, exaggerations, and rumors surfaced online and in the far-right media. They're going to take your guns under the ruse of preventing war. There were fears that he'd try to stay in office indefinitely, that he was a socialist and a Muslim, even one wild rumor that he was going to invade Texas. Wow. Militias exploded once Obama became president? Well, well, well. We meet again, racism. I've been expecting you. It's almost like Obama became president and then the entire country locked its doors. And looking back on it, it's so funny that these guys thought Obama was gonna try and stay president forever and invade Texas? Because as soon as he could, Obama was out! Winning Oscars and kite surfing Richard Branson. Uh, so long, uh, bitches. And you know, it's so weird how this stuff works. Because these people openly admit to every single conspiracy theory that they believe. But as soon as you ask them if it's because Obama is black, then all of a sudden they're like, what? Come on, man. No way. It's, it's that other thing that, that we don't like about him. Oh, what's that? Well, he's, he's, he's so tall. I mean, what is he doing up there? So, modern militias are not real military organizations. But what sets them apart from other violent gangs is that they tend to act as if they are. These people are incredibly dangerous. They're running around like a bunch of G.I. Joes, armed to the teeth. Groups of civilians who are creating military structures in their organizations, collecting and storing arms, ammunition. This is the Kill House. Move. Move part of a training ground for a right-wing militia in the American South. This is for uh, conducting military operations in urban terrain. Um, we want to practice and rehearse moving up to these structures. You always want to be prepared for whatever could possibly come up. I'm training for uh, a type of event that uh, I will be wearing this 24-7. If getting off the couch and doing something is extreme, then yeah, I'm, I'm an extremist. Uh... I don't think it's the getting off the couch aspect that makes you an extremist. I mean, there's a lot of middle ground between getting off the couch and decapitating mannequins in the woods. Because that dude was purposefully describing the most benign part of what he was doing. It's like Hannibal Lecter saying, well, if setting the table and listening to classical music makes me a cannibal, then I guess I'm a cannibal. No, dude, it was the eating human liver part. You, you eat humans. Ah, yes, that too. <laughs> what I don't get about these militias is, that if you want to dress in army fatigues and train for war, you can do that in the military and they'll pay you and they give you health care. This is like someone picking up strangers and then just driving them around a city for free. Oh man, join Uber, get yourself some of those stars. And look, it's clear that these dudes have a warped ideology. But a big part of this is just that these guys clearly need friends. They're lonely, they're scared of change, and this militia stuff gives them a sense of community. But because of toxic masculinity, the only way they can feel comfortable bonding is if it's based around violence. I just wish one day, one of them would just be like, hey guys, instead of spending all weekend canning beans and shitting in the woods, do you guys maybe just wanna go out for brunch? Thank you. I thought I was the only one thinking that. I know a place that makes a great eggs benedict. So. Today's militias are less organized and more heavily armed than the original ones. But there's another big difference too. While the 18th century militias were formed to protect the country, the 21st century variety usually wants to rip the country apart. Most of the men charged with a criminal plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer have ties to the Boogaloo movement. The Boogaloo is a term taken from the title of a 1984 comedy. It started as a meme among gun rights activists to refer to a popular uprising. Then in May, the Boogaloo jumped into the real world when armed men in Hawaiian shirts 
protested lockdown orders in Michigan, Texas, and North Carolina. Those Aloha shirts, they're not for a luau. Homeland Security and the Department of Justice have labeled them as a violent extremist group. This group is a, a very serious potential threat. They've already been linked to two deaths in California, one including a, a federal officer. Their ideology is based on a notion of an impending second American civil war, which they call Civil War II electric boogaloo. So hold up. If I understand this correctly, the first civil war was fought to end slavery and then the second one will be because some assholes were bored? And people, did I miss the memo where tropical gear became a white supremacist thing? These guys have Hawaiian shirts, the Charleston white supremacists had tiki torches. What's next? Instead of burning crosses, is the KKK gonna start roasting pigs? What these people don't seem to understand is that a second civil war would be a disaster for America. Because not only would it kill millions and destroy the country, also, we would all have to grow mutton chops again. And I don't think I can pull off mutton chops. Or could I? Actually, you know, maybe, maybe I'll, I could look good in mutton chops. Okay, you know what, I'm ready. Let's do a civil war. Yeah, I think I'm, yeah. <laughs> and that's the story of how militias started in America, what they've turned into, and why they've become one of the biggest threats to the United States of America. And if you don't know, now you know.